this section is all about writing ads. And there's a lot to understand about Google Ads and Google Ads has changed their text ads and, and the formats of their text ads a lot over time. Uh, when I started in this business, it was one headline with, with 20 characters and then it went to two headlines and then it went to um, more characters and then expanded text ads and then multiple headlines. There's all different sorts of things you could do. And we're gonna start off, I'm gonna teach you about the anatomy of your basic expanded text ad in Google Ads. They're just called text ads now. I still refer to them as expanded text ads because they're significantly expanded on what we used to have. But there's also other formats of uh, text ads, mainly dynamic text ads, which are in beta right now, but I want to show you what those are as well, and I'll show you those at, at a future lecture in the course. But first, let's just start off with the anatomy of the basic text ad, which you're going to be using most commonly. You get two headlines, okay? Each headline shows up at the top, and each headline is a maximum of 30 characters. They're split up into two headlines, and they're usually split up with either a pipe between the two headlines or a dash between the two headlines. And when you create that ad in Google Ads, you'll actually see that as a preview. It's usually this um, pipe symbol between, between the two headlines. Beneath that, you have this little ad indicator, which is a uh, gr tiny little green box and with a, well, so it's a transparent background with a green outline that indicates that this is an ad. And then you have your display URL with two different subdirectory paths. Um, you have 15 characters per path and the display URL character limit changes. If you have a long display URL, um, you could request a review. I'm gonna teach you how to request a review, but you try to keep it within you know, 15 to 20 characters for that display URL. I get a lot of clients that ask us, they, they, we, we, you know, we take on their account, we're running ads, and they call us frantic. They say, You're, we, we, we looked for our ads, we saw an ad, and there's, there's a URL on the page. We don't even have that landing page on our site. We don't have a page like that. And I said, calm down. Your display URL is just your display URL. It doesn't actually mean the website or landing page that a person is going to. So for example, your final URL, which is what you're gonna, it, your final URL doesn't ever appear in the actual ad to a user. You put a final URL in, which is where a person should wind up if they do click your ad. You have your actual URL call or a final URL with, a, with potentially uh, your tracking template information appended to it if that's the case. But your display URL could be a cleaner version of a final URL. So for example, let's say we're talking about um, office chairs and we're talking about and we're, we're, uh, we're doing rolling office chairs. So if I were to find that page on Poppin's website, it might be like rolling, question mark chairs slash search equals whatever, right? It might be this really weird search results URL to get me to a page that just has rolling office chairs. So what I could do for my display URL is I could write, I could say poppin.com for my root URL and then I could have, let's say chairs as my first path rolling, right? Which gives the user a very clear indication <clears throat> that they're going to the right page. So if a person does take a look at this display URL, they'll be like, oh yeah, that's actually a page that I like to go to. So they don't have to see this big messy thing. What this, this long URL, where I, which I would copy from the, the, the menu bar or the browser, the browser address bar in my browser, that's what goes here in the final URL. That's the actual page. That's that long, ugly looking URL. And then you could clean it up, make it nice, and use this as part of your marketing. And interestingly enough, I wasn't gonna cover this, but we've seen time and time again that putting paths that are relevant to the search term and the keyword in your dis in your the keywords in your paths so if i if i have keywords like office chairs rolling chairs right and i have that in my path quality score goes up okay so it does affect quality score click through rate will go up and it's a really smart way to use display url you now have two 90 character descriptions um, we're going to talk about in the next couple lectures what to use descriptions for what to use headlines for some best practices so on and so forth but your description gives you um, each 90 characters. Now don't expect both descriptions to show up together. They almost always don't. Sometimes you'll get, um, and there's no way to control it necessarily. So you have to have each description, view it as its own little micro ad because you're only gonna, in most cases, get your first description and sometimes have your second description. Usually, you'll, if you're only gonna, when you get only one of your descriptions to show with your ad, you always have at least one of them showing. You'll never have an ad with just your headline. You always get the description. But if a description only, if only your, if only one description shows, it it will usually be your number, your first description. 
So make this your key selling point. Make this your key value proposition. Make sure in description one, you're telling a person why they should click on your ad today, why, why they should buy from you, and then additional supporting information could go in description two. Now again, this is not an A-B test. You're not testing description two against description one. There are other tools and vehicles that we'll use in Google Ads to test different ad headlines, to test different descriptions, to test ads against each other. N absolutely, but your two descriptions in an ad is not meant as an A-B test. You'll have your description one and sometimes you'll also have description two and have a much larger ad. Beneath your second description is all your different extensions. So if you have location extensions, you have promotion extensions, you have price extensions, you have location extensions, you have an app extension maybe, you might have a call extension, you have your call outs you know, across here. And we know all about ad extensions because we cover them in enormous detail. So anyway, this is the anatomy of a Google Ads expanded text ads, otherwise known as text ads. This is the ad format that you're gonna be really using the most consistently, the most commonly used. I'm also gonna show you later on what uh, dynamic expanded text ads look like. Uh, but now that you're familiar with the different components, different pieces of the text ad, let's talk about some compliance with Google Ads, best practices with Google Ads, and some psychological principles with writing effective Google Ads. And maybe I'm gonna show you a case study, and let's get to it. I love this stuff. I look forward to seeing you guys very soon in the very next lecture.